I'm Sonia Livingstone. I'm a professor in the Department of Media and Communications at the LSE. For a long time I've been studying media audiences, beginning with television audiences, beginning with adults for often uh, so-called trashy shows like soap operas and talk shows. And um, I've been really interested to understand why um, people that we think of in all kinds of serious ways in their daily lives as workers, as voters, as um, uh, engaged in the public world, um, why do we sometimes have such a pejorative view of them when they watch TV? And so my research has been concerned to listen more carefully to the um, justification and rationale that audiences themselves give when they engage um, with different media. And that tradition, that kind of body of work I've now carried into uh, the study of children and families and how it is that they um, how it is that they explain why and how they engage with the media that they choose and what significance that might have. In thinking about audiences I guess I draw partly on the tradition of reception studies which is um, if you like a kind of semiotic uh, approach to the world and it positions therefore audiences as readers and interpreters of the entire world um, and of course much of the meanings that circulate in society much of the uh, world that people are reading is itself now mediated um, but I also think about audiences um, insofar as they are um, positioned within uh, particular kinds of textual forms and particular kind of um, production processes um, and for that uh, the tradition of work on the circuit of culture is particularly um, helpful in seeing how audiences are part of a much larger um, set of processes. Um, and then perhaps last, and I do try to bring all these ideas together, um, I try to think about audiences um, in relation to the people's role as publics or how it is that people, as they engage with the meanings of the media, um, through that engagement also engage with the rest of their lives and so their media meanings are significant in all kinds of domains beyond their particular media engagement. I'm very conscious that in the field of media and communications generally, there's a lot of claims made about audiences, there's a lot of way in which audiences are um, spoken for rather than directly listened to, um, and those views are very often pejorative, very often uh, that audiences are variously mindless or idiotic or easily manipulated, uh, and every time as a researcher I as it were, go out of the university and talk to people directly, um, I are made to listen to their perspective and to see what's meaningful them, for them in the context in which they uh, live and engage with media. Um, and that doesn't mean that I'm persuaded that they are incredibly savvy and know everything and have the answer to everything, but there is a rationale to be understood, there is a context to be understood, um, there's motivations, and once we've started attending to all of that, um, I think that really puts the lie to the claims that they are all mindless and indeed that they're all the same. It's tricky, isn't it? I think everything's changing in many ways. Um, I began researching media audiences when the audience was understood as the television audience, it was understood as the national audience. Um, it was um, thought of in such a different way from today's um, engagement with multiple media, many of which are themselves transnational um, and often engaged with in very individual as well as shared ways. But when I think about um, why people engage with media or um, the kinds of interpretations that they bring to bear or the way in which their daily life context um, uh, shapes the ways in which they interpret or resist or counter or debate with different um, messages in the media, and then I see all kinds of continuities. And I guess the struggle in my research, and I think for a lot of the field, is between that sense of stasis and change. I think the really crucial thing for audience researchers is to get out of the university, not ask people to come anywhere near where you are or where you work, but to go and find them where they engage with the media uh, spontaneously in their lives. So that means that I visit a lot of people at home. Um, I talk to children uh, where they prefer to play or hang out. Um, and sometimes that involves uh, using media with 
them as they talk about how they're responding and engaging, and sometimes it means having them reflect on their media um, and their media engagement. But I suppose what I particularly like about being where they are is that they are more relaxed, and there's also various kinds of um, checks around them. You can see a child describes how they engage with the internet, and you can ask them to show you on their phone, or uh, you can see what books they like to read and you can ask them to show you their bedroom and what it is that they're actually engaging with. Or you can ask one member of a family how they respond to something and another member of the family might comment and critique. And there's a kind of reality check in that, as well as seeing something of the natural context in which people actually engage with the media. And that's always much richer and um, more productive, even in uh, generating some contradictions that give you um, pause for thought later when you wonder what it all means. I think one consistent challenge for audience researchers is to listen to the incessant claims being made about people's media engagement by those who haven't spoken to them and haven't um, uh, listen directly to what they have to say. So I often think about the challenge for media audiences in terms of voice and it's striking how much of audience research really focuses on those who are, if you like, not um, middle-aged, middle-class white men. It is all the other constituencies whose voices are insufficiently heard uh, in society and it's often um, in other areas than the main valued fora of our society that those voices get heard and it's often audience researchers and I think it needs to continue to be that that's one thing audience researchers do. Many people have found um, some measure of voice and um, expression through diverse media um, and we should be out there as it were tracking them and understanding them but our task is also then to bring what they have to say um, back to those more valued spaces and ensure that they're not marginalised.